Hey everyone. So today's topic is on war and peace. And this actually has to do with what we just wrapped up with, Holy Week. Jesus conquered death for us. He died on a cross to forgive our sins and to grant us peace. Pretty incredible. When you think about the wars and the evil events and the battles of the Bible, there are so many. David and Goliath, for example, a tiny boy was able to fight off a large giant, but he didn't do it with just his power. He did it with God's power. His faith was so strong that he was able to defeat a giant and bring his people peace. Or how about the war with Pharaoh? Moses had to lead his people out of Egypt and into the promised land, but not without a major fight and many fatalities with the Egyptian people. And if you fast forward to our world today, we know that thousands of deaths had occurred on 9-11 when terrorists flew two airplanes into the World Trade Center, causing them to collapse. We have been trying to conquer terrorism for a long time now. And if you think about it, we are in a bit of a war right now. We are in the middle of a war with a virus. This virus has come into our world and has affected so many people, so many lives, and so many jobs, and even our economy. Sin is unfortunately an ever-present part in our world. We sin every single day. Well, we all try to put up our swords sometimes and fight our enemies. And I don't necessarily mean our physical swords. I mean, sometimes our mean comments, our words, our actions, right? We may even experience this daily with our parents or with our brothers or with our sisters, especially when being quarantined. No one ever said that it's being easy right now and that we are in a beautiful position in life. When our collective national shock turns to anger, and sometimes it will, and that anger turns into rage like protests, we may soon find our nation but a tripwire away from many heartaches and unsettled days. So if there's so much sin in this world, then how can we ever find peace? You know where I'm going with this probably, because you know the answer is going to be Jesus. Well, let me tell you a story. This comes from Matthew chapter 26, and it talks about the arrest of Jesus leading up to his death on a cross. We know that there was a lot of violence done to Jesus. He was beaten, he was whipped, stabbed, and so much more. Well, once Judas came along and kissed him on the cheek, giving him up, Jesus was seized and arrested. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest's ear off. Jesus quickly said, put your sword back in its place, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Jesus knew that he had to die to fulfill the scriptures, but what he wanted was peace. He was trying to explain that if you kill by the sword, you will die from it as well. Instead, make peace. Now, obviously, this is hard to do, but Jesus says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. People crave peace. During this pandemic, people want answers as to when this is going to end. People want to know if the death toll is going to continue to go down, right? People want normal. People want peace. We want to go back to normal. And how can this possibly happen? In Romans chapter 5, verse 12, it says, Death has come to all because we have sinned. We all deserve death. But Jesus conquered death for us. He showed us that our faith in him is more important than anything else. Jesus died on the cross to forgive our sins and promise us peace, that eternal life in heaven with him. So continue to pray for peace. Pray for peace around the world when it comes to terrorism. Pray for peace with this crazy, crazy virus and pray for peace for people who are going through a hard time because we sure need it more than ever before. Have a great night and I hope to see you soon.